You're listening to Where You Live with Gene Sullivan. Welcome back to Where You Live. I'm Gene Sullivan, broadcasting from the True North Painting Studios. The show is brought to you by American Family Insurance, the Kim Bennett Agency, and Extreme Exteriors. You can count on Extreme Exteriors for expert installation of exterior siding, roofing, soffits, fascia, decks, windows, and more. With their knowledge and experience, they can design the perfect solution to make your home beautiful and energy efficient, saving you maintenance and money for years to come. Give them a call at 763-441-1334 and tell them Gene sent you. It's time now to hear from the Community Associations Institute. The CAI Minute is brought to you by New Concepts Rental Management. Whether you're an accidental landlord or a seasoned investor, New Concepts Rental Management can advise and guide you through every aspect of the business. Give us a call at 952-922-2500. Are you a volunteer in your homeowner association? Maybe a residential property manager wanting to increase your industry knowledge and obtain professional credentials in property management. Are you a vendor or professional offering services to homeowners and associations or property managers? If you said yes to any one of those questions, then join the Community Association Institute. The CAI is a great organization, helping you be informed and more proficient in your homeowner association board member or property manager role. It's also a great way to network with potential clients. For nearly 40 years, CAI has provided education and resources to volunteer homeowners who govern community associations and the professionals who support them. Visit cai-mn.com to learn more. That's cai-mn.com. The Minnesota chapter of CAI holds monthly manager's luncheons, board member education training, property manager certification training, and much more. It also produces a bi-monthly informative magazine called Minnesota Community Living. Why not join the Community Association Institute today? You can do so online at cai-mn.com and select Membership. We're now going to turn our attention uh, to uh, the state of Illinois. Uh, Out of Orland Park, Illinois, there is uh, a story of the Orland Park townhomes. And I'm uh, entitling this, At Best They Are Fools, At Worst Racists. What's happening is in Orland Park, Illinois, uh, the Orland Park Townhome Association, they are stating They only want to amend their governing documents to state that rentals are no longer allowed in the association. A number of associations have uh, turned and changed their amending uh, governing documents to state that and to change it that uh, rentals are not allowed. But in this particular case, the Illinois Attorney General is alleging that there is discrimination. So what's the truth? What's taking place or what took place that's uh, causing uh, the desire of this association to amend their governing documents uh, to state no rentals allowed? Then that is being turned into a case of discrimination. Well, I think it, uh, the devils are in the details, so let's get right into them, shall we? Uh, there is a member of the Orland Park Townhome Association who is a landlord. And uh, he's rented out his unit, and he's done so for uh, some time. But apparently over this last uh, year, he uh, was renting, uh, and uh, the people he was renting to were Caucasians. Well, they moved out early. So the owner started to show the home because there was a vacancy. And uh, he began showing them to several African Americans. Now, the landlord alleges that right after one particular weekend when he had shown the unit uh, to uh, several several people interested, and they were all African-American, the next-door neighbor came uh, over to this uh, landlord and said, I hope you're not doing what we think you're doing because we don't want to live next to, and then made a racial slur. Now, what happens next demonstrates why I say, at best, this association are fools, and at worst, they truly are racists. What took place is, a few days later, after this incident of this landlord having this neighbor approach him, he received a letter from his homeowners association. 
And it was a letter uh, from the board that said, we are asking all owners in the association to vote to continue to allow rentals to take place, but only under these provisions. Number one, you can rent to people who are single, and you can rent to people who are families, but families as narrowly defined as two parents. Not one parent, families, but two parents. And uh, families who have foster children, they're excluded from being able to rent in the association as well. Well, the month hadn't even passed when the landlord received another letter from the association. And now in this letter it said, uh, by the way, the governing documents have now been changed to prohibit all rentals at the property, period. I, I, this took place in a quick amount of time. Landlord didn't even remember receiving any kind of notice for any kind of vote on changing the, the governing documents. And it appears that the association board was uh, changing their tune so fast and furiously through all of this, they couldn't even begin to articulate their reasons coherently. Uh, finally, when pressed uh, a little bit later by the Illinois Department of Human Rights, the board of this association said, um, uh, we don't want rentals because uh, we're not getting proof of background screening checks on people who are moving in as renters. But question I uh, want to ask is, uh, were they even asking for background checks before this incident took place? where this alleged uh, neighbor came over and made a racial slur to this landlord? Uh, my guess is probably not. And uh, even if they truly wanted to see background screening done, and I can tell you a lot of homeowner associations have that requirement uh, in, the, in their rules and regulations if someone's going to rent out their unit in an association. And I think it's a good idea. Uh, because you want to know who's going to be living in there. But you need to deter you need to make sure that the factors that you use that make a good renter, uh, you need to make sure that uh, they are uh, good and that they are necessary. Some things are not necessary. What is necessary? Well, it's good to be discriminating. And what I mean by that, uh, the ability to make a distinction, can be good when it comes to distinctions in criminal background. Would that be a good thing to screen for? Of course. You don't want people who have criminal activity, uh, people that have uh, been uh, abusive, violent, and uh, living in your neighborhood. So uh, doing a background check for a criminal background, that, that's good. Uh, doing a background screening check to see their ability to pay. That's a, a necessary and a good thing. We want to make sure that they can pay. Why? Because if they pay, then they pay the landlord. If the landlord gets his money, then he's able to make the mortgage payment and to be able to pay the uh, monthly association assessment. You can discriminate uh, according to a uh, person's uh, predilections with pets. And, uh, and so there's a number of things that you can discriminate, and that uh, is not considered bad. But you can't discriminate according to family status. You can't discriminate according to race, according to economic assistance. And it's real clear here that as this association was demonstrating uh, through the actions of the board of directors, things were changing so quickly in a short period of time, uh, it appeared that uh, they were trying to rationalize. And you know what I mean by that. A rationalization is giving a good reason for the real reason. And the real reason was trying to, I think, to try and hide uh, their discriminatory behavior. And so they were trying to do this in uh, a way that uh, they could uh, uh, kind of walk around this. But apparently, it ended up being uh, something that uh, the Illinois Attorney General is now 
uh, looking at this particular homeowner association and claiming that there is discrimination and there's going to be a lawsuit that is going to ensue. Uh, and so it is, uh, it's very interesting uh, what's taking place here. I think there's some important things that an HOA needs to remember uh, to not get into a situation like this because uh, uh, in this particular case, it looks like their, uh, their actions and uh, their desires here were uh, clearly discriminatory. But there are times when an association may not mean to be discriminatory, but they can have the appearance and they can still be in trouble too. I'd like to talk that through with you on what an association can do to keep themselves out of this kind of trouble. But we're going to take a break right now, so don't go away. And we'll cover more of what's happening at the story of the Orland Park townhomes after these messages. <music> 